Good morning and welcome everyone to a new uh, lecture of the Jean Monnet Open Online Course of European Integration that uh, we offer in cooperation with the University of Chernivtsi in Ukraine. And today I would like to welcome uh, a new group of students from the University of Suchava who are going to take part also in this course. Uh, the, the, um, the, there are at the moment then two uh, great uh, groups of people joining this course from Chernitsy in Ukraine at the Faculty of Economics and from the Faculty of Economics of the University of Suchava. Both Chernitsy and Suchava are in the uh, cross-border region of Bukovina that is uh, half and half between uh, Ukraine and Romania and they are all very welcome. There are three connections at the moment but these three connections, they, they, uh, some, some of them they are collective connections so they are groups of students um, that uh, are uh, connecting from the same classroom. Uh, welcome, Oana Andrea Moraru. Uh, good morning and thanks for your presence. As you know, you can write on the chat live. This is a live transmission, but there is uh, there is uh, a lag of some seconds between the time that I, I transmit and the time that you receive it it's just a question of seconds you should take this into account i encourage all of you to write on the chat so so that um, uh, you can give feedback you can also ask uh, questions and please uh, you can write all along the transmission you do not need to wait until i finish the the transmission you can uh, write all along the, the way because you must consider there's this lag, what is called latency. Uh, it is this difference when you transmit something live, uh, it takes some, uh, some seconds to, to, to be transmitted on the other end. Okay, <clears throat> so welcome everyone. And in today's lecture, the title is what is the European Union and how can we study it? Yes, well, this is one course of introduction to the European Union and uh, what we would like to, to, to discuss today is the nature of the European Union and how can we study it? Why is this question important? This is a very important question before we start the study of the European Union to understand what the European Union is. Because as a function of what the European Union is, we will need different tools, different theories, different models to try to understand the European Union. The, the, so the, the question, today's question is, what kind of animal is the European Union? My child, my, 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 my oldest son, is studying the types of animals, yes? The, the, the mammals, the birds, the, the different types of animals. Well, we need to know what kind of animal the, the European Union is before we can un understand it properly. Juan Andrea Moraro says, a wild one, it's a wild animal. We'll see now, but the idea is that uh, depending on what the European Union is, we will need different, uh, a different um, scientific uh, discipline to understand the European Union. If the European Union was to be a bug, then we, mm, we might need a biologist. To understand the EU, we need the, the field of biology to understand the EU. If the EU is uh, an animal, maybe we need the veterinary medicine to understand how this animal works. Yes, 
But if the EU is a person, then we need a doctor, we need a, a, the medicine. So uh, the, 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 the nature of the EU is important for us in the beginning of this course to help us find the right tools to understand the European Union. And we'll see that this is a debated issue. Yes, the, the, <clears throat> to, to understand what the European Union is, first, what I will try to show you is what the European Union is not. And for that, I would like to share my screen with you to show you some, um, uh, some slides, yes? of what has uh, happened in what what has happened in the united states long ago more than uh, almost 60 years ago in the united states i will show you now i will share my screen with you okay <clears throat> Can, can you can you see it now the the in the state of of uh, arkansas in 1957 it was there was a federal decision of the supreme court of the united states that forced all the states to eliminate segregation of schools this means to to integrate black students into the same schools with white students the idea was that it was unfair discrimination to segregate students in schools for whites and schools for blacks. And this judicial decision of the Supreme Court of the United States, it forced the, 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 uh, the states to integrate their schools. Yes, in the case of uh, Arkansas, this created a very uh, big uh, constitutional a dispute yes between the state of arkansas and the united states of america what happened is that at the start of the first day of the school the the when when the students uh, went to to school there were demonstrations of people they were it was uh, very very um, difficult for for uh, for them to get to the school because there were um, uh, demonstrations, there were riots of uh, citizens from the state of Arkansas that di did not agree with this judicial decision and they did not agree that black students should join white students at schools. What happened is that the governor of the state it, uh, um, also agreed with the majority of the population in the state and what he did is that he used the national guard it means the army of the state to stop black students from entering the schools he said that he did this in order to to avoid the the um, to avoid conflicts with with the, the citizens of the state and to avoid violence and it was to protect the public order that they didn't allow the black students to to go to school the president of the united states was very angry at this decision and he said that the 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 black uh, students should be allowed in the school and the national guard should be withdrawn from there so the governor of the state withdrew the national guard but the next day, when the black students wanted to go to the school, they could not enter the they could not enter the school uh, because the, the the were these demonstrations, and the local police was not strong enough to stop the demonstrators. How was the issue solved? The issue was solved when the the when, when the uh, president of the United States decided 
to use his constitutional power to federalize the National Guard of the state of Arkansas. This means to federalize the, the state army of Arkansas and uh, ordered the army to withdraw. Yes, and he sent the, the, the own federal troops. He sent an airborne division there, the, par the parachutists, the paratroopers there, and this helped the black students to enter the school. As, um, as you see, this, uh, this case is very different from the, uh, um, from, from the case of the European Union, we will see, yes? Because in the European Union, uh, the, uh, there have also been conflicts between member states and the Union, and they have solved. They have been solved uh, in a um, in a different way. Uh, Gabriela Turetki, hello, welcome to to the to the live lecture. All of you who are present, there are five co live connections at the moment. You can write on the chat and you can say your name. And uh, this uh, will be taken into account because it's a contribution that helps us make um, a better course. You can please also write your feedback. You can tell us how this works, if, uh, if, the, if the image and the sound are correct. And you can also ask any questions that you may that you may have. I will share my screen with you again, so that you have um, an idea also of what happens in the European Union. I'm not sure if this is working properly. No, it's not working. Let me try to go back. I'm sorry about that. Um, I will need to share the other screen that is a smaller one okay the idea is that in the in the border between spain and france there are very often conflicts because the there's uh, there are groups of uh, french farmers that do not agree with the fact that the spanish vegetables spanish wine uh, that uh, are exported from Spain to France and to other European countries through the border between Spain and France, these products are often of a better quality or of a cheaper price than the French products. And the French farmers uh, are not happy with this competition from Spain. And what they do is that sometimes they go to the border and they... Um, they they stop the 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 spanish trucks and they uh, block them from entering france with this agricultural product in this picture here you can see uh, trucks that they are full of spanish wine that is going to be sold in in france and that they are stopped at the border and all the wine is thrown on the road yes this is another example of a Spanish truck that has been stopped by, by, by French pickets that they do not allow the Spanish produce to, to go into the, into the French uh, market. What happens when, 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 when this happens, the, 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 the French authorities, the French police, they do not intervene. They look at the situation, but they do not try to stop the French farmers because that would be politically unpopular in their own country. And uh, 
the, 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 the result is that the trucks cannot enter the country when there are these kind of strikes by the, by the, French, uh, by the French farmers. What can this help us uh, understand about the, the, the European uh, Union is that the um, European Union is different from the United States. It does not mean that there is not the rule of law in the EU because this kind, this uh, this uh, uh, incidents only happen from time to time, and when they, they happen, then the, the case is brought to the European uh, to the European Court, and the, the 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 court usually gives fines to the. Uh, uh, French government for not intervening, or asks to the French government to 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 give compensation, to pay compensation to the Spanish farmers and to the Spanish truck drivers that were stopped at the border. Yes, but this takes long. It may take one year. It may take uh, two years until the case is received. But then they receive compensation. But the case is different from the United States because in the United States everything was resolved with the use of force. The president of the United States could use the, 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 the federal troops, the paratroopers, and send them there and in, in, by, by force impose this judicial decision. Yes? In, in the case of the EU, there's not an EU army or an EU police that can be sent to this, the border between Spain and France to let the, the, the trucks uh, enter the country when the French farmers are trying to stop them. The, the difference then is that the European Union is not a state. What the definition of a state, according to Max Weber, the definition of a state is that uh, it's a, an entity that has a monopoly over the use of uh, legitimate violence, of legitimate coercion by force. A state has this power. Like in the case of the United States, when there was a conflict and when the the, the the federal state needed this power, they could federalize the National Guard and they can, could use it their own force, they could use the monopoly of force in Arkansas. But in the case of the EU, the European Union is not a state. France is a state, Spain is a state, but the EU is not a state. And the EU does not have this monopoly of the use of force. So the result was different. It was this economic compensation to those who were unfairly stopped at the border, but the, the drivers did not pass. So the, the, the idea is that the European Union already, we know what the European is not. The European is not a state. If the European Union is not a state, this reduces maybe the kind of uh, theories and models that we could use to understand the European Union. Yes? But even if the European Union is not a state, Victor Stoika, hello, welcome. Even if the European Union is not a state, the European Union has some important features that make it uh, that make it qualify as what is known as a political system the european union has three important features that we will review now the european union uh, first has a very developed set of institutions that are working every day to make European Union policies. A very developed institutional setting uh, um, that is working permanently. The European Union is not just like a, 
meeting of states that happens every four years and they discuss a particular topic. No, every day in Brussels, in Luxembourg, in, in many other places, there are many European Union institutions at work uh, shaping how the European Union works. So the, the first feature is that it has a very developed institutional setting. The second feature is that the European Union makes policies that can impact very strongly the lives of European Union citizens, and not only European Union citizens, also citizens from Russia, from the United States, from Latin America, from all over the world. So the European Union has policies that uh, um, affect the lives of people very much. It, it, has, uh, it has important policies in many fields, yes? The, the, the European Union has a budget, sometimes in countries such as Ukraine or in Romania, they think of the European Union as uh, an entity that gives money to them, that gives uh, subsidies, gives projects, and, and, and it's like a source of uh, European funds. But we must know that the European budget is a small, it's a small one by comparison with national budgets. The European budget only represents 1.2% of the European Union's uh, gross uh, national income. It's uh, just a little bit more than 1% of what is produced in the European Union is spent by the, by the EU. This is a very, very small proportion compared to a national government, for instance. The, the national governments in, in the European Union usually spend around 40% of the national income. You compare 40% with 1% for the European Union, it gives you the idea that the EU is not very powerful in budgetary terms. But this can give you a wrong idea about the EU. Because even if the EU is not very, very, very powerful in budgetary terms, the EU is very, very powerful in another very important respect, which is in regulation. The European Union has sometimes been called a regulatory state because the European Union has the power to pass legislation that establish regulations that bind people in Europe and outside of uh, and outside of Europe, those who want to have access to the internal market, for instance, that are uh, very, very important and that have an economic effect that can be even greater. And I will give you now one example so that you can understand how, without the power to spend a lot of money, the European Union can have a very a great economic power. Think about, for instance, about cars and about car emissions. The European Union regulates car emissions to try to, uh, to reduce pollution in Europe. And uh, some of these standards that uh, are imposed by the EU to car manufacturers, they have a very great economic effect. One example is when the EU uh, introduced some uh, 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 pollution limits for cars that in practice made it compulsory for all car manufacturers to introduce catalytic converters in cars. You know what catalytic converters are? They are some parts of the exhaust of your car that try to uh, make uh, uh, the, the car fumes cleaner, yes? They are called catalytic converters. Okay, a catalytic converter, what, when it was introduced, it meant a very great increase in costs, in production costs for car manufacturers, because a catalytic converter can 
uh, can cost maybe 500 euros. It's a very expensive uh, part of the car because I think it uses platinum and uh, 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 and uh, it's 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 not cheap. It's around 500 euros to have a catalytic converter. And when you will have a car, you will realize when if the catalytic converter is not working and if you think about replacing it, it's very, very, very expensive. Well, for car manufacturers, this what this meant was a great increase in their production costs. And this thing for some car manufacturers can be a very, very serious thing because there are some car manufacturers that produce cars that they want, uh, they can only sell if they have a competitive price. Think uh, about a small car manufacturer um, or a manufacturer of uh, cars for, for uh, working people or a manufacturer of cheap cars such as Dacia in Romania. Yes? If, if the European Union forces with its regulation to uh, introduce catalytic converters in cars, this can increase the price of a car maybe by 5% or by, by 10%. So this is a, um, a decision by the EU, it's legislation adopted by the EU that even though it does not have a direct budgetary implication, it really has an economic impact because it, it does not spend the EU directly, but it makes other people spend on behalf of the EU. So the, the European Union with this is deciding on what people are spending and who gets what and who receives what. So this is the second feature of a political system that the EU has policies that have a lot of power. Yes, and the, the third feature is that the citizens in, in, in Europe and not only in Europe, also outside Europe, citizens have learned uh, to know the, 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 the power that the European Union has and the institutional uh, framework with uh, which the European Union works and what they do is they try to influence the European Union's decisions. They know that the European Union decides on important things that can affect their lives greatly, and they know how the European Union works through different institutions. So what they do is they try to influence these institutions. How? How do they try to influence these institutions? They try to influence them through elections, not only European Parliament elections that happen every five years, but also through national elections. When they vote on national elections, they many of the issues that are on the agendas are about the European Union or about the relations between their countries and the European Union. But it's not only elections. It's also a very, very important uh, way that citizens try to influence the EU is through lobbying. Constantly in Brussels, for instance, there are thousands of interest groups that try to influence the European Union's decisions, usually through the European Commission or through the European Parliament. They try to approach legislators and they try that these legislators, they take their interest into account when adopting legislation. So the European Union, even though we have started this lecture by showing that it is not a state, the European Union is a political system. The European Union is, um, has the three main features of a political system. It has the developed institutional framework, it has the policies that uh, uh, impact people's lives, and it has the politics, the people that try to influence the European Union's decisions. So it has government, it has uh, policy, and it has politics. Because it has these features, 
yes the european union is not such it may be looking a little bit strange but it is not a different kind of animal from other political systems such as the united states the german political system the australian political system the brazilian political system the ukrainian political system the romanian political system it it uh, it is just a rare case of a very well known species which is the species of political systems and therefore to understand the 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 european union it's possible to use other theories and models that have been developed for other political systems and this brings us to the second question the second question is uh, we said what is the european union and how can we study it the second question how can we study it if we know that it is a political system maybe we can use the same um the 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 same tools the same models the same theories that we use to understand other political systems but there's not agreement in the academic community about this issue about how to study the eu in the beginning the debate was between the fields of international relations and the fields of comparative politics for some people the european union was an international organization in which the leaders of the member states they retained the control of everything that happened in the european union so it was about negotiation between uh, leaders of sovereign states but for others the eu was more as a political uh, political system and then we could uh, try to study it in the same way as we study the united states or germany and we could compare it in the same way as we compare the american system with the japanese or with the australian system we could also compare the european union system because uh, as we said it is a political system but this was the original debate between international relations and the field of um, of political science but now this for, for for a long time already there's a third way there's something uh, that is neither international relations nor political science and that is gaining a lot of momentum in this debate and it is uh, from a scientific point of view uh, as i will tell you later it's more dangerous and it is the field of european studies there are some people that say the european union is something different the european union is not a state the european union is not an international organization the European Union then cannot be studied with international relations or with political science. The, we should uh, create a new science, a new scientific domain to understand the European Union, and they call it European studies. Yes? This approach that is very common with some, some kind of uh, uh, scholars, it's uh, dangerous from a scientific point of view and the, the the why why is it dangerous because it just creates like a turf for the uh, those interested in studying the eu that this is isolated from the from the uh, science political science or the fields of international relations in other countries and from a scientific perspective this is not very convenient because the uh, science as we know it today is based on positive theories on theories that try to help us understand and predict reality what will happen in reality and the validity of a theory the strength of a theory is uh, by comparing it with other theories 
and see if your, your theory is able to explain reality better and it's able to uh, predict better than other theories. So a theory, we do not know if it's true or not, but what we can do is to test it extensively by contrasting, by comparing the predictions of the theory with reality in many different cases. And the more that we test it, the stronger our theory will be. The problem is that if you make theories only about the EU, you will be able to test them only in a limited sp uh, space. And the, these theories will be, from a scientific point of view, uh, less strong. Yes? I will give you an example that I very often give so that you uh, understand this idea. Imagine that uh, Isaac Newton, he, he sees how um, an apple falls from a tree. And he watches the apple falling, and he sees that the apple falls down. And also he sees that the apple falls down with a constant acceleration of uh, um, 10, 10 meters uh, per square second, yes? So he's, he, he tries it with one tree, and he sees another tree, and he says the apples always fall down in the same way. And then he takes the apple, and he goes to a tall building, and drops the apple, and sees that the apple falls down, and that the acceleration is always the same. And then he can travel to, to, from, from England uh, to India or to France or to Germany, and he can drop an apple and he sees that it also falls down. He tests the theory many times and he says that, yes, the apples always fall down with the same acceleration, yes? And he tests from a greater height, from a lower height. He tries as many as many different ways to test it, and the theory becomes stronger. Yes, but then someone makes a space uh, a spacecraft and goes to the moon, and takes an apple to the moon, and drops the apple on the moon. Yes. And the, he says that the, the, the apple does not fall with the same acceleration as on Earth. And he says, oh, the moon is different. Apples on the moon do not fall with the same, uh, with the same acceleration. They fall more, more slowly on the moon. They accelerate more slowly on the moon. So this means that the moon is different. So this person may have the, the, the temptation to say the physics, as we know them, physics are not good to explain how apples fall on the moon. We should create a new field of science, and we will call it lunar studies we call it lunar studies and says you do not understand how apples fall on the moon this is has to be for specialists on the moon then we will call them uh, experts in lunar studies yes the 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 risk with this is that then the, you say that physics cannot explain that if you accepted this view of created lunar, lunar studies, then physics would not develop as much as it has developed. And Isaac Newton wouldn't have invented the, the, the law of universal gravitation. He made a, a universal law. And the fact that it is universal, it makes it more scientific, it makes it stronger because it can be tested in many different ways. Isaac Newton says, no, we do not need to invent lunar studies. The apple on the moon 
uh, falls with less acceleration because the because the moon has le uh, uh, less mass than the Earth. Eh? It, it it has less uh, mass and the attraction that it exerts on the apple is less because it has less mass. But everything conforms to a universal rule that we it became to be called the universal uh, um, law of gravitation universal gravitation law yes those who those who who defend the field of of european studies sometimes instead of looking for a general universal laws scientific laws that will help us understand the eu but also the us or also the german political systems what they do is just try to focus on the on the eu and sometimes they even invent words and they in they in when there was this word the government for instance and you have at harvard the jfk school of government yes to study political science how the how the government works in one country and the those who defend european studies they invent new words like governance instead of government yes this would be equivalent like in the in the case on the moon instead of uh, using the word uh, gravitation you invent a new word gravitans because apples fall more slowly on the moon is and on the moon we do not have gravitation we have uh, gravitans as you see today as what we know with the universal law of gravitation this would be wrong because this law is universal and it's able to explain the case of apples falling on the earth but also apples falling on the moon and it is considered more scientific that is why when we study the, the 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 european union we will try to use universal scientific disciplines such as political science international relations economics not try to make a special um, um i, I isolated uh, a space of science for for understanding the european union so what you will learn in this course will help you understand how the european union works but in the same time will be useful later because it will help you understand what happens elsewhere it will and anywhere in the world this is the 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 idea of this lecture was what is the European Union and how can we study it? Yes, the idea that from uh, uh, the European Union, even though it has some differences with other political systems, it has sufficient features to be considered a political system. And so that we can use the same uh, political science that we use to understand other political systems and the same economics that we use to understand other um, other economic systems as well okay so <clears throat> this is more or less the, the 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 introduction to how we should approach the study of the european union uh, Gab uh, gabriela turetki says but the EU policy can affect also the people worldwide. And also, I think it can affect uh, some other country policy. Of course, I give you one, one example. This chair. This is just a chair. Yes, it's, a, it's an office chair. It's a, it's a chair for uh, the computer. It's an ergonomic chair. But this chair, to... to, to um, be sold in the european union it needs to meet some european union regulations it needs to, to meet some european union ergonomics some safety regulations 
to be able to market this chair in the European Union. But this chair was not made in the European Union. It was made in China. But even if it was made in China, the Chinese uh, firm that produced this chair had to abide by the European Union regulations for chairs if they wanted to produce this in order to be uh, selling it in the European Union. So, of course, European Union policy that, as we said, is very important as far as regulation is concerned, uh, uh, can affect people's lives very much, not only inside the EU, but also outside of the EU. And this lecture is being broadcast also for people in Ukraine, for instance, that at the moment is outside of the EU. But the European Union decisions affect the lives of Ukrainian uh, people already uh, to a great extent at present, even when they are not still members of the European Union. Carmen Astase, hello, welcome everyone. There are eight, uh, eight live uh, connections at the, at the moment. As we said, one of them is in, in the University of Chernivtsi in, in, in Ukraine with several people, one of them in Suchava. If you want to write, to say your names, to say hello, you are very welcome because with that, you are not only um uh, showing your participation that you are also helping you are contributing to making this course more interactive and a better course for everyone not only for those who are attending now for but also for those that will see it uh, in the future okay good after this introduction i wanted to show you something uh, we have many, many people that have registered in this course, many people that have shown interest in this course, and we owe this also to the cooperation from our partners in Chernivtsi, uh, such as Irina Kachuk, or in, uh, in Suchava, such as Carmen, Carmen Nastase, that have uh, helped us promote uh, this course. And uh, there are now some dozens of people that have already registered in some way for the course. They have uh, logged in on the website and they have created one account. Good. But uh, in order to register in this particular course, uh, in this particular course, and in order to, to, to be able to participate fully in this course, you need to enroll in the course itself. And now I will share my screen with you and I will show you how to uh, register on the, on the course. Just one second and I will show it to you. Uh, I will share my screen with you. I'm sharing my screen with you now. I will make it bigger for you. so that you see it better. Okay, so in this, um, this is the main course website. You can access it through our affiliated website, such as the one at the University of Chernivtsi. You log in by clicking login with Facebook or by introducing your username and password. I'm logged in now. And what you need to do is you look at the course, Jean Monnet Open Online Course of European Integration, and you will have a menu here. And in this menu, I do not have it anymore because I'm already enrolled in this course. But when you look at this, you will have an option that says Take Course. And you have to choose the option Take Course. When you will choose that option, here on the right column on the right side you will have um, a number of activities that will appear for you such as the opening lecture last week this lecture today and also some multiple choice tests 
And in the end, you will be able to get also a certificate. But in order to do this, you need to uh, enroll first on the course. When I look at the here as an administrator at the enrollments, I can see the people who have um, who have enrolled in the course. I'll make it bigger too for you. And we see that there are people from uh, Romania, there, there's some people from Ukraine, many people from Romania, but not so many people from Ukraine. And I know that in Ukraine, we have a great uh, group of people, yes? So the, the, the idea is that all of you that have already created an account, you should register in the course, yes? You see, if we look now here, the, the, the names of the people that have shown interest in this course, there are many, many people. Several pages and from different countries, even Gali, Galina Vasilchenko from Kyrgyzstan, but many from Ukraine, you see, Ukraine, 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 Ukraine. And we do not have so many of those people registered. So what I, what I ask you is to register on the course. So now you have the, the, uh, the idea of what you have to do, because once you register, you will be able to participate fully in, uh, in the course. You will be able to take multiple choice tests. And very, very, very importantly, you will be able also to, to participate in discussions with other colleagues. When you see one, uh, one course, I will share with you again. When you see one course, uh, you, you, you usually see um, that there are referencing discussions. There are discussions related to the course. And you can enter some of those uh, discussions and to give your input. For instance, if there's one discussion that says, European regional policy has too many objectives. And if you have a video here as an introduction to this discussion, do you agree or disagree? And you can read what other students like you have written about this. You see what they have written? You can also write read their opinions you can also write your opinion and you can also give them some feedback for instance if someone says uh, about european regional policy uh, the partnership agreements programs and the structure 11 thematic objectives and so on if you like this and you can vote on it by clicking on the number of stars for instance, you can give it, if you like it very much, you can give it four stars or five stars. If you like it less, you can give three stars, two stars, one star. But you, you can give these people some feedback. Then when, when you go to these people's profile, it will appear here what people have voted on, on these people's contributions. It appears on your profile. Let's go to, for instance, to Juan Andrea Moraru that is online now. In her profile, I can see what she has written, what people have voted, and I can also see the tests that she can, has taken. Other students will not be able to see your tests, but you will be able to see your own tests. Okay. Good. Uh, please write on the on the chat if, if, any questions that you may have about this um, about this course. I see that now you started writing. Juan Andrea Moraru about the Apple case. I think it is true that the Apple falls the same from trees on Earth, but I don't agree that they have the same speed. 
not the same speed, the same acceleration. When it falls from a tree, it always goes with the same acceleration. If it falls from a, from a bigger height, when it comes down, it will be faster, yes? But it always goes with a constant acceleration. Uh, because the gravitational force gets bigger while the apple falls closer to ground, the force, the gravitational force is constant for the apple, only that this force accelerates the, the apple. This gravitational force on the moon is less, so the apple accelerates less. So it increases the speed less, um, less uh, fast, yes, on the moon. But we are not discussing about uh, physics here in this course. What we are discussing is about the idea that if we are able to create universal laws, universal scientific laws, we will be able to test them in many, many, many other uh, uh, scenarios. And this will make our scientific laws more trustworthy. Uh, we never know that if they are true because there can always come a new case that says that the, our theory does not work but the greater the number of cases with which we test our theories the stronger they they will become good any any more questions about uh, the course the 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 idea is that I, I would like you to to register on the course all of you who are interested in taking the course and all of you who are interested in, in receiving the the diploma please register on the course uh, if if your name does not appear yet there i will show you now look I will share my screen with you again. Once again, I share the screen with you and I show you the people enrolled in this course. If you look at these people here, I will show you how many are from Ukraine. Natalia Marusiak from Ukraine, one. Irina Zvinieva, two. Irina Tkachuk, three. Does it mean that only three people from Ukraine want to take part in this course? No. There are many more people from Ukraine that want to take this course and want to receive the final certificate for this course. So what you need to do is when you get home, when you get to your computer, you need to uh, log in to the Eurosci uh, site and you need to register on the course. It's very simple. You just need to click on the menu that says take course. Good. <clears throat> okay. So the the um, <clears throat> I will stop uh, sharing. Okay. The the idea is that what we do here in this course is very experimental. We are testing new technologies that we try to uh, use in order to make this a better course. Uh, better course. What we have tested now that we have not tested the first day is how to share the screen. In some cases, it has not worked perfectly, and we will have to improve this. Last week, we had also difficulties with the sound that was interrupted. The sound was interrupted last week. And um, I think it was, it's a, it's a hypothesis I have. I think it was because we had some kind of interference from my uh, blue, Bluetooth uh, on, on the mobile phone and on the, on the smartwatch that between them when someone sent us a message by facebook they 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 created an interference that affected the sound we will see today if the sound works better we have introduced also a new 
uh, course, to, uh, a, a, a new technology that is for screen, screen sharing. It has not worked perfectly yet because when I put the presentation, I was not able to use the, the full screen uh, for you, but we will work on this. Um, in this course today, also for the first time, we have two new students from China. And I'm very proud of this, of the fact that we have two new students from China. And the, 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 the international profile of our course is increasing because this will make our discussions more fruitful. And the other day I was talking to them about this experimental approach to this course and how we test continuously new technologies to, to try to make it better. And the same is happening nowadays in China very much. China, in, in the, the technology that they are developing, sometimes they do it on an experimental basis and they use the help of the community. Some of their mobile phones that they, they use, they um, developed every week new operating systems and they try to improve every week. It's something constant. And the community helps them by testing them. In this course, it's something similar. We test every week new technologies on the course. And uh, you, with your presence, you help us make a better course, and especially with your feedback. Uh, how can you have your feedback? By writing on the chat during the live transmission, but also by writing on the Facebook uh, on the Facebook group after the, the the transmission finishes, you can like the video on YouTube if you liked it, and so on and so forth. And with this, all of us together, we will uh, make uh, a better a better course. Um, now um, I will stop the the, the broadcasting, uh, the general broadcasting for everyone. But I will share by the chat a link for those of you who want to enter a video conference with me. The video conference will not be broadcast. The video conference will be a, a, something for a more personal interaction for those of you who have this ability. So I will share you with you now a link to a Google Hangout with which you can um, uh, chat uh, with me in real time now, after this broadcast is finished. And uh, <clears throat> with uh, when you will receive this, uh, if um, you just have to click on the link, if you have a Google account, uh, you will be able to, to enter this uh, video conference with, with me and with other people that want, to, that want to join. Thank you very much for your cooperation, for your presence, and for your participation. Next week, we will have another lecture, and I will announce on the Facebook group the topic uh, of the lecture that will be at the same time as this week at 11.30 Eastern uh, European time on Thursday. Thank you all very much and goodbye.